Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. You put in all three intros last week, Norm. Hey, I said I would. <laughs> yeah, all failed <laughs> intros. Uh, How's everyone doing? We're excellent. Doing good, um, yeah. I got a lovely, I, I had, a, a, I'm working on this book, and I had Kevin Kelly over here the other day. He's oh. a delightful human being. Isn't, uh, also, you know, along with Stuart Brand, like, one of the Forrest Gumps of the internet. Uh, you need to explain that. More I just feel probably. like whenever you talk to Kevin, he was present at the beginning of so many important things. And even if he wasn't present, he was tangential and and part of the. You know, it's just like he shows up in he all was, of these different. He was in the room where it happened. Yeah, he was in the room where it happened. Yeah, he was in the room where it happened. Know, when we spend a lot of time with people we know thinking about the future, he's mm -hmm. been thinking about quote unquote what the future is for a very very long time. Well, he's still also doing a guy it today. who learned when he was in high school, I want to make magazines. All I want to do is publish magazines. Like he's mm -hmm. a born and bred like Adam Rogers is another one. Yeah. Right. Just like I, I want to make those people. I've What's always that? been jealous I, of people. I, I yeah, admire yeah. the people who want to work and aim, you know, there are people who want to write books and <laughs> books are great, but I love the periodical. So at one point I said to Adam Rogers, we're hanging out and I was like you know, it, I love Adam. Wired's Adam Rogers. Just Wired magazine's Adam yeah. Rogers. Yes, I love him because I love getting him cranky and hearing him rant about stuff. I find it a very enjoyable. Yeah, it usually doesn't take that much work. No, it doesn't. And I said, "Hey, I know that print is dying, but what if you had like a subscription model where you could kind of order the subjects that you want articles on and would be delivered to you in a paper copy?" And he went, "Yeah, I get what you're saying, but..." Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you just took the, like, the design exactly. out of the job. It's like, as a magazine guy, I want to be part of the team that puts the thing together and sends it to you, not the curated. It's, not you don't curate it yeah, every no, week. That's his not job the point. is curation. Yeah. It's it's funny because there was a there was a big conversation about fact check, fact checking a few weeks ago happening on the internet because of I think stuff related to Elon Musk, but I can't remember. And one of the things that came out of that was uh, Aaron Biba was writing mm -hmm. about yep. posted on Twitter about how you know if you work at if you see something in a magazine and it's a magazine that has an actual fact checking department because it's a month long process and because those fact or, or sometimes multi month process you know. If you've ever written anything for Wired, you know what it's like to get a call from their fact-checking desk. I've done it a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah, and they like I wrote a squirt gun review one time, and I spent four <laughs> hours on the phone, literally dismantling the squirt gun and taking pictures of the insides of it to 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 validate that hey, the way I said this thing works is the way it actually works, and and as a result, like the most aggressively fact-checked content anywhere. Is going to be in a print public a print magazine right, right, right. with a reputable yeah. yeah I, it's I, a completely different thing. I found the the types the speci the specificity of the questions they ask from the fact checking department at Wired to be thrilling it's and amazing. really nifty. Like oh, this is even deeper than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah that's like their job. Every assertion, critical thing, deconstruct any any assertion gets gets combed over. Well, and it, it's it's the thing that we lose going from a monthly publication. And, and Norm and I both started in yeah. monthly publications. Going from monthly publication down to hey, how fast can we get this on the web and right. out there yeah. for the hot takes? The number of the the number basically every article I read today is missing critical words in the middle of sentences because yeah. someone's dictation software. And by the way, I feel like almost everyone writing on the web is using dictation software at this point. No, they're just using the predictive keyboards and they're uh, bad. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. yeah. At any rate, wait. What is all this was by way of saying? Your thing about using the three intros. <coughs> Um, reminded me of a suggestion that Kevin had. He's a big fan of Tested, uh -huh. and he listens to this podcast. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. You should come back by sometime. Absolutely. He Why didn't you tell me you had a magic leap? <laughs> um, and uh, 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 he watches our videos and said, what he would love us to do is to pull, every time I have a little tip, like, oh, hey, step drills are really neat for this. He'd love us to come through a bunch of our old videos and put together a compendium of mm. just little tips. And I think that's a great idea. I, it's one of those things we had talked about ages and ages and ages ago. I think maybe because Kevin brought it up five <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Probably. As, hey, every time, yeah, like like we need a bucket. You need a, not we, you need a bucket of tips. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've done talks about this, but the, I think the fundamental difference 
video and text is the indexing problem. With video, you can't index. And that, that problem, the, the, the idea that he has would be so easy if there was a way to index, to, to dump and to do Google-type searches. Actually, he was talking videos. about that. And what he was saying was there are now translation services for video that are still really terrible, but they're good enough to go find the things you need to for find keywords. within the video, and it'll timestamp And that's one piece it. of it, totally. But there, you're also talking about, like... Visual elements too. Mm -hmm. Like, what if I wanted to say, you know, I would love because video is it's right, a, probably, a thousand words in every frame. Yeah. Right. Then I would love to find me every time lapse we've ever done. Oh my goodness. Right. Find right. me every yeah, yeah. every medium shot, every well, shot. Like, give it five years, it'll happen. Yeah. Like, no, no. like look at look at what you can do with Google Photos or Apple Photos now, where they're doing machine learning on the images and doing mm -hmm. image recognition. Where I can type, you know, dog and dog catching frisbee, and it will give me every picture of my dog catching a frisbee that I've taken over the last thirteen years. Amazing. I think yeah. the, the the most magical thing is like books, mm -hmm. right? The fact that I could search a phrase that I distinctly remember in yeah. a book, but I don't remember the book title, and Google Books will have that. Even oh. if it's not 100% correct, I'm like, wow, it, I, I would never have been able to find yes. this. My, yeah, yeah. my favorite is, is that I want that movie with that guy uh, <laughs> who drives a truck with a groundhog in it. And, it, and go, you type that into Google... And it'll bit pop up, and it's like Bill Murray was in Groundhog Day in 1980. Um, and, and that used to be what Ask Metafilter was so yeah, good for. Yeah. And that's the wisdom of, or the quote unquote wisdom, but the yeah. power of the crowd because there is no, there are very few unique ideas and unique questions. The, if you had, if there's something that stuck with you enough that you couldn't remember that thing, someone probably has asked it in a forum. Were you at Maximum PC yet when we were playing, when we would play the Google game where you would try to come up with a two word phrase that had no, or only one page of search results? Right, that's, yeah. So that's actually a, uh, 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 there's one of Jonathan Lethem's book, Chronic City includes a character whose goal is to find YouTube searches for which there's only one, uh, sorry, not YouTube, Google. Google searches for which there's only one return. Yeah, like it, 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 for a while, it, probably prior to like 2003 or 2004, it was possible to find a two word phrase that only had phrase. only had one page of results. Amazing. I mean, it's, yeah. it's Schrodinger's though. The moment you you type it in and oh, you yeah. find it, you've you've, you've limited you've tipped, the possibility. You've the algorithm, yeah, <laughs> for something else. Um, I also had another visit a couple days before Ooh. Kevin, uh, our friend of Tested and spacesuit maker extraordinaire. In fact, some of his handiwork is behind us right now. Ryan Nagata came by. Oh, I love Ryan. He was uh, here for Space Fest, uh, the space convention up in uh, Santa Rosa, and uh, brought by some toys to show me. Uh. Yeah, some stuff I that we'll maybe cover on Tested soon. Uh, I don't want to necessarily talk about it, but basically it was like two and a half hours of him and I Pulling stuff off the shelves and geeking out and talking about things we'd learned recently. And was he on his way up from? I guess if he was here he over the past LA. weekend, he was not in Las Vegas for Star Trek Las Vegas because that's true. He was big. He's a big Star Trek fan, and yeah. he, that's a convention I think he would he would have otherwise been at if not for Space Fest. Was Is anything it? important happened this weekend at Star Trek convention? Oh yeah, of course. I don't. That was that was. Yes, he knew. Yes. <laughs> oh, did something happen? Are you are you being serious? What? Do you not know? I have no, no idea know. what you're talking about. Uh, what? Uh, I literally have no idea what you're Patrick, talking about. Patrick Stewart's coming back. Oh, yeah, I didn't know. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, on, on the other podcast uh, that I was doing, I, I, both Kishore, Jeremy, and I all recollected the moment we found out. And it, it will be, for Star Trek fans, one of those, where were you when you found out Patrick Stewart was coming back? I was back. playing video games on the internet. Shocking. On Twitch. What are the odds? Yeah, well, it was, it was the tournament day where we were ah. getting destroyed by people who are much better at video games than us. I had Copy. to pull over and tweet. Oh, really? You were in the car? Yeah. How did you find out in the car? Did you get a text? I got a text. Oh. Who texted you, Kachar? Uh, no, Gary. I forgot oh, Gary, yeah. okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I was very excited. I'm... I'm I, there's so many different ways you could go with that Patrick Stewart thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it could be like an uh, inner light kind of Patrick Stewart. It could be... Uh, do, I, I don't, don't think, I mean, and certainly many people listening to this podcast are of our generation who maybe have watched Next Generation or Star Trek back in the early 90s. But a lot of millennials or younger folk don't realize how how big of a cultural phenomenon just watch Star Trek was. Oh, well, for a syndicated TV show, especially, like the, the shit stopped on Saturday night at 7 o'clock at my house. Everybody yeah. gather around the TV and we watch Star Trek. 100%. I mean, Time Magazine is maybe no longer as relevant, but cover of Time Magazine, Newsweek, like we're talking about a science fiction program 
program being in very, main, very, very much mainstream and popular culture. And we watched culture. it constantly, and it was in syndication, and you watched it mm-hmm. constantly in syndication. And I, it was back before it was on the man. It was like that ripe time where yeah. TV shows, there was enough cable channels and local channels to see old stuff, but they didn't have. We didn't have VHSs really in Blu-rays well, we, or DVDs. We had, we had, you didn't buy stuff; you recorded it on <laughs> right, TV. Exactly, right. you recorded it. So. You'd in syndication, 178 episodes. You'd watch, and if you missed a night, you'd have to wait till the next cycle of syndication oh, I to just, watch that episode. I remember Best of Both Worlds, the first part of the of the Locutus two parter, and like that aired in May, I think. And okay. then we had to wait all summer. Wow! Yeah, uh, four months yeah. until Actually, September. <clears throat> this is something watching Mad Men again. I was every time you watch a season finale and you just scroll up the next season and watch it, you remember like, oh my god, we spent a year every well, single more time. Than that. Sometimes yeah. more than that. Yeah, like it was. You lose something when you don't have like. You I would know, go back very, and yeah. now you go back and watch the old, the last season again, right? Yeah. But but then you couldn't do that. Like they would run like ten episodes of the season, and then the new the new season would start. It was it was it was a dark time for TV watching. Um, mm-hmm. I've been uh, I've been going back and watching something which I uh, I had watched part of the pilot and didn't think much of it, and then at a friend's vigorous recommendation, my wife and I have started watching The Americans. Oh, that, mm-hmm. that I had never watched and. <laughs> It's are are so you great. are you in the middle of the first season? Yeah, I'm on episode yeah. five. I think we had talked about this before, where you said the first episode starts off and tells you it's a different type of spy show. It gets kind of like it's uncomfortable to watch. It's brutal at yeah. times. It is very, oh, super uncomfortable to watch. Right. Uh, it, some really intense stuff. I I find there's a couple of episodes in which the writing is uh, not great. Mm. Most of them, it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tommy Schlamme, uh, uh famously uh, Aaron Sorkin's co-producer on Sports Night and The West Wing, uh, and an amazing, Christine Lottie's husband, and an mm-hmm. amazing television director and producer, uh, uh, directed a few of the episodes. Mm. Um, the quality of the acting that Jonathan Rice and 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 and. Uh, uh, Carrie Russell. Russell, yeah, just so incredible. Well, and and the FBI agent across Noah. the street, Noah, yeah, yeah is is yeah, like, the sort of best uh, friend from Truman Show. Yeah. Oh, oh that's where he was, right. I kept okay. on, you know what? He, he, I kept thinking he was Biff Tanner. <laughs> and that's it. That's, <laughs> yeah. All my scanners are like, Biff Tanner. No, it's not Biff Tanner. Biff Tanner. No, it's not Biff Tanner. I'm like, I'm, I'm Biff like, Tanner. No, yeah. he brings back Truman. <laughs> yeah. I keep one with the six pack. Yeah, yeah. with the six pack. That's <laughs> right. That's yeah. right. He has a great, great speech. And, um, uh, oh, man. I, that show is very good. I, I stopped watching after the end of the first season just because it was. The intensity level is too high for me. I can't believe they can maintain it. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. And uh, 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 John Tessier, the showrunner on Mythbusters Jr., was telling me, oh, no, you have a lot to look forward to. They really do maintain it. You, have just you the first three the... episodes felt like I'd watched two whole movies. Yes, yeah. yes. And it's tense. It's in, in the same way that Breaking Bad, mm-hmm. it was a, it's tense throughout because it's a how do, how, how is he going to get himself out of this mess? That show is very much a how are these this family, how is this couple going to get themselves out of this mess in this episode? My wife has a theory. About the about the deaths in the show, she said. I think that she said. I think that um, I think they're going to follow this dictum that they're not going to kill anyone we know. Like that, the audience mm. could that could change. That could change certainly. Mm. But up till now, everyone they've killed has been a, a one off. Like they've shown up to be killed, and then they've been killed. And then yeah. spoiler alert: people get killed. Oh, in, in all sorts of ways. In ways that you hear them, but you don't see it because it's made for cable oh, no. television. Yeah. Have you gotten to the suitcase scene? No. It opens an episode. It's, yeah, a, it's, it's a montage. It's... Oh, I'm no. not saying yeah, No, no. Don't, don't, I got don't, to the not, I'm weird not sex with the guy who liked to beat Carrie Russell. That oh, was super yeah. intense. There's a lot yeah. of there's there's a lot of uncomfortable uh, off-camera uh, noises. It turns out being a spy, not so glamorous. It's <laughs> shitty, I would say. It's really bad. Oh, it would be yeah. awful. Yeah. Awful. Yeah, like uh, the level of think about the level of stress of like you having to do your tax return in the springtime, and then think about that level of stress constantly for your entire life. But also, if you mess it up, you'll get murdered. Right, or or at the very least, you'll suffer extreme physical pain for weeks. Yeah, <laughs> like that's the best. Case you'll scenario. hope you're murdered. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It seems really spy bad. stuff. I know you guys haven't watched it here, but I'm going to give the recommendation again for Mission Impossible, the new one. Oh Fallout. yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. totally and psyched to see it. I just I, if you can find the time. Superman. Henry Cavill is yeah. in it. Uh, Tom Cruise does amazing stunts. You know, there's, there's a, sorry to interrupt, but there's a point in the trailer where Henry Cavill just puts his dukes up. Yeah, and he he's reloads. So scary. Yeah, he reloads like, his arms. What's that? Uh, cocks his arms. Or reloads he, his arms. He cocks his arms, and there's a way in which he does it that I'm like, absolutely, pay that man millions of dollars for a movie because the degree to which he sells that tells me I want to see this. Improved. 
Did I say that already in a really? podcast? Improv scene. Maybe. What? Really? That, that, that him cocking his arms that they use in the trailer. Also, the sound is in the sound design of that trailer because you hear the cocking of the arms. Yeah. It's not in the film. It was only done for the trailer. Interesting. Uh, and even though no one is directly addressed at the internet quote unquote conspiracy, and we assume this is because they splice you versions, uh, as he cocks his arms, he grows a pocket and he grows a beard. <laughs> Wow. His beard, his beard gets a little fuller after the cock, and there's a pocket that appears on his shirt. It's very weird. I know. Just letting uh, that sentence go. But yeah. if you're a fan of filmmaking, and this is written and directed by Christopher McQuarrie, who's a long, now a longtime collaborator with Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. He uh, de wrote uh, Edge of Tomorrow. He directed Jack Reacher. He did some work on Valkyrie. Uh, also, Tom Cruise, he directed Last Mission Impossible. He did a three-hour-long podcast with Empire Magazine. Really? About the making. It's actually part one of two, because the other second half is another three hours. What it's a six hour long. thing. Oh, my That's God. Lovely. About the breaking down of every single scene. <gasps> about how he directed it, how he as a filmmaker and a writer, because he did, he won an Academy Award for Usual Suspects. Um, he was the DP, right? He was a writer. Writer, Usual okay. Suspects. So uh, he did from that collaboration with, you know, Brian Singer, and then Brian Singer did Valkyrie, and then he came onto his own Empire Magazine. Uh, he talks about how they conceived of s this film from the stunts. The two stunts you see in the, the trailer, the helicopter chase scene where Tom Cruise is actually flying a helicopter, yeah. and also him doing a halo jump, jumping out of a back of a... a, a C-130 or something? Yeah, like a A-40-4000 or something, some okay. crazy um, jet. Uh, and that's all being filmed in real time. They had those stunts written on paper. They knew they were going to do that, and they wrote a movie around that. And it, you know, it's ninety-eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, so I, I it love, always amazes me when they get that right. Like Gladiator, yeah. they didn't have a script when they started filming. They yeah. really just started shooting scenes and they put wow. it together as they went. And I mean, we have, cool, right? we have like the, the smallest, smallest taste of that when we had that one day of filming when we did the short film in New Zealand, right? And that gave a sense of like we had our shot list and we knew we needed the coverage. Wasn't it and we terrifying still, how much. Like, you're like, okay, let's shoot it this way. Boy, I hope this gives us some options. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. And, then, and, and we still ran out of time. Yeah. At the end, like, we, need, we have five minutes left to get this shot before people need to go. He talks about it in the podcast. They had 15 minutes to shoot certain scenes, and if it had gone one minute over, that's another $300,000 yeah. that they didn't have like I've, the I've, next day. Oh when my I've God. done, like, we did some commercial shoots and stuff like that last year, and it's not anywhere near, like, $300,000 a minute if you go over but like there's a when you have when you have union actors and you like your your the crew your crew and you're like everybody has to be done by a yeah. certain time yeah. or else it's going to cost us a ton of money. Right. It adds an incredible amount of pressure on something that's already really really hard and slow and yeah. plotting and uh, yeah. that's incredible. I'm dying to see it. I was just looking at my clock uh, at my phone to see like oh maybe there's maybe it's at Alamo and I could go see it this afternoon. Ooh. Hey everyone, Norm here. Before we continue with this week's episode of Still Entitled, I want to thank the sponsor of this week's episode, and that is NFL Podcast. Now, I know we're all nerds here, but there are a bunch of you out there, myself included, who are looking forward to the sports ball seasons coming up, NFL seasons coming up. And if you're looking for expert coverage and analysis of the NFL this season, look no further. NFL podcasts have you covered. Interested in the latest news from around the league? The Around the NFL podcast crew has exclusive access to industry insiders and team personnel, allowing you to feel in and all the action. Or perhaps you'd like to hear more about your favorite players and analysts break things down on and off the field. Then don't miss out on the Dave Damesheck football program, only on unfiltered opinions allowed and if you're a more devoted fan of the NFL than the average fan be sure to catch the Move the Sticks podcast hosted by former NFL scouts Daniel Jeremiah and Bucky Brooks subscribe to Around the NFL the Dave Damesheck football program and Move the Sticks on your favorite podcast app or NFL.com now back to the conversation <laughs> mm. 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 I would put that movie up in contention for the upcoming Oscars because the big news this week is, of course, the Oscars has announced a new category. Very nebulous in how they're going to uh, actually qualify this category, but is achievement in popular film. This and, is dumb, right? And, uh, I mean, I, I'm going to get it out up front. It's a dumb idea. This is a terrible idea. And by the way, and the, someone tweeted this, and I totally agree. You know, if you're going to add new categories, what about best performance in a comedy versus best performance in a drama. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, globes it. Let, let's break this down in terms of like... Yeah, comedy why, or musical. Yeah. Yeah, get it right. Why, why they feel like they need to do this. It, because they currently, they have 
one top film and the right. public holds this institution in such high regard and the ranking, right? The, the fact that first it was, what, five films that got nominated, now 10 films. One. And of that, one singular film. Now, we all know here every top film list is made of five films and 10 films, right? Every top 10 list is made of 50 films. Oh, yeah. So to have a singular, it, it's, it's the... One, it's a problem with the fact that you only have one winner. And then second, what does best film mean? And if you look at the Oscar, the best picture is you know, outstanding achievement in film. Right, right, right. And what is that? That means so many well, things to so many different people. It, and they've been, over the, what, 80 years that they've been doing this, sometimes they get it really right. But more often than not, when you look, like if you look back at the movies from the 50s and 60s, they messed up more often than not. Back then, for yeah, sure, it's, movies it's that political. didn't even get considered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. movies, movies that we look at now, we're like, what? what Super important, and yeah, why did you? Yeah, exactly. I think one, we as a public should hold not hold that list as you know, you make your own list. Oh, right? you can tell people not to do that. I, but good I luck. think that I, I had a theory when I read that, and and the internet had this, and Twitter had its way with the Academy of saying things like, oh yeah, what about the category of best movie no one under forty three has seen? <laughs> yeah, I I liked um I liked uh, let's see uh, least popular movie which is what they're going to rename best best unpopular movie which right, is what they're going right. to rename the new best picture the new I best picture that. yeah but I think that they're floating a trial balloon I think they're thinking about ways to make the Academy Awards more relevant to a wider audience obviously well, yeah, but I mean, they, obviously, they said but, as much but the but the but the, but the I, I, like. They're announcing the category without announcing the metrics by which it gets. And, but and the, the metric, the problem is in the title of the category is the word popular. So you're already the subset of films that are qualified. You already already right. m taking away the critical aspect. But, right. But, right. You're saying that the it's the only metric, the only thing that qualifies a film to be considered here is that it's successful in a non-critical. Right. Arena. But but, right. but if you look at like a film like The Big Sick that came out at the end of end of last year and had a fairly limited run for most of 2017 and mm -hmm. then open up wide in January, like does selling out uh, 500 theaters a week is that popular? Yeah, that's I not, think that's, that's not, not popular. To answer that question. But that's not a billion dollar movie. No, no, like, it can't I, 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 just right. be money. It yeah. can't. Well, I mean, it can. That's how the Grammys work. Right. Like oh, well-received, really? so right? well, so well, then you're saying yeah. well-received film, right? Like what, what is it? Yeah. Is, yeah. is, is it a tomato meter? Do we right. mean it at the tomato meter? It, oh. um, I it, like, is the last Jedi a popular film? It made a billion dollars. seems a little divisive. But it's, I don't I was, know. it's also here that they were never going to ask James Franco to host it again. That would make oh, me yeah. feel like they're on the right track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like Fallon. I did Fallon back. Fallon was okay. Who was the last person I thought was really great at hosting the Oscars? Hugh Jackman. Ellen? Uh, oh, Hugh Jackman was good. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. Didn't they? No, host? they did the Golden Globes. They did the Golden Globes. They did better. Um, yeah, they, that was amazing. Did they did it more do than it? once. Or has he done... He did, he did something. He, he does the Tonys. Always good. He's done the Tonys like a million they times. He should get NBH. He's good. He's been in movies. He was in Harold Kumar. That counts. Except that I think that the one thing Oscars don't need more of is song and dance numbers. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is why you're not in charge of programming the Oscars, Adam. It loves being in the twenties. Um, I it's forever stuck in the twenties. So, so here's the thing: a lot of the criticism of a popular movie category is are the exact same things that we said ten years ago when they rolled out the best animated feature category, mm -hmm. right? And and with a few exceptions, they've done a pretty good job with that. Like mm -hmm. the, it, the nominations are always at least thoughtful. I think they've had a couple of kind of crappy movies nominated over the years, but as a general rule, the right movie wins that category. Yeah. Um, and it's an implicit acknowledgement that what they would nominate for best picture uh, can, could not be a popular film. But I mean, but that's bunk because a lot that of incredibly cannot? popular films have won best picture. I believe it's usually is not. Y usually yeah. is not right. You so know. and. and and often, frankly, when it's been a popular movie like Dances with Wolves, it's not an it doesn't end up being an important movie. Well, I mean, Titanic, maybe you could argue is an important movie that won. I, I totally agree with that. Return of the King, maybe. Return I don't know if Return of the King is actually an important movie, though, when I look What's back on it. What's funny is that I love Return of the King, but it's it's actually my least favorite of the three I think movies. If you pick the important movie out of that trilogy, it's Two Towers. Yeah, yeah. totally. Having yeah. watched all three recently, I, I agree. Yeah. So a fun exercise, and, and we could go on and on about the, and we'll never know until the Academy actually 
says what the criteria is. They could still roll it back. And, and, and maybe they can. It's an evolving institution. They're not, even, they're not even planning to do it for this year, are they? I, no, I it's think, 2020. I, yeah, that's, oh, that's what, oh, yeah. really? They're, for the 2020, long, uh, I think that means it's the 2020 awards, which is 2019 movies. Right. Got it. Yeah. So, which makes sense so you to not Oscar, roll it out right away. Marvel has a chance, I guess, next year. Uh, Infinity Wars 4. Yeah. yeah. Best popular film. Oh, Best gosh. kiss. Maybe they, the, the, Bruce the, Banner the and... Oscar itself should be holding some popcorn. I think the Oscar should be like Spider-Man dangling from the ceiling, kissing somebody upside down. That's that's <laughs> oh, my nomination for the statue. So I always loved that scene. And then I read an interview with Toby Maguire where he talked about hanging upside down for hours with water pouring yeah. in his nose. Yeah. yeah. And and it was like it was cold. Right. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Also, when you go back and watch those movies now, if you go back and watch the OG Star- Spider-Man movies. Yeah. How are they? Uh, they've aged okay. The effects are rough. Yeah. But... It's very clear that they were all shot on backlots in the same way that like the Tim Burton Batman movies were, which I love and is neat. Because but they look really old. Which is funny, of that. having been to the been to most of the like New York sets in yeah. L.A., it's hilarious how often I spot them in television commercials and oh, yeah. everybody's shows. Well, it's like, it's like it's like we've talked about this before, but in Batman Returns, Tim Burton shoots a lot of those fights like down with these Dutch angles, right? And the Dutch angles are because they had to clip out the parts of the set that aren't that don't like. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, what blew yeah. me away about, and I think I mentioned this when we were talking about it when it happened at the time, but the uh, the season one of Jessica Jones, what blew me away was that they would be like, "Oh, I'm on the corner of 18th and Sixth Avenue," and I, being a New Yorker, knew that they were actually on the corner wow, of 18th really? and Sixth. Every location they mention that they're in in that show seems to be the actual location. Do you think they shut it all down? Or do you think they just sh- d- cheated? Like, I, like, I, I, out I think that they. I think they. I don't know. Not a second I, unit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, Hell's Kitchen's not that big. That's no. true. <laughs> I am the. Ter- I, I am the hero of these eight blocks. Okay. So Norm. <laughs> uh, so the exercise I want to go through okay. is let's go through the past, like, say, five years. Okay. And I'm going to give you five options for each year. These are movies that made a lot of money, which mm-hmm. is by one metric a way you be considered. Well, let's popular. see how, how how obvious this becomes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I feel like it's going to be quite obvious. All right. So in 2017, right? Which uh, I, what, what one best picture in 2017? Shape of Water. Right. Shape of Water won best picture. So okay. definitely not a popular. No, film. no. But of the five, let's say Last Jedi, yeah. Wonder Woman. Thor Ragnarok, It, and Coco. So I didn't see It, but I saw the rest of them. Oh, wow. Ragnarok it's a, is it's my It's a toss-up between Ragnarok and Coco. I think Ragnarok is the best Marvel not film they've made. Wonder Woman. No, not Wonder Woman. I love, 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 love Wonder Woman, and I've watched it several times, but its third act is a total a total mess. Like the My favorite I bit don't of like Wonder the villain. Woman. The villain bores me. Yeah. The Wonder Woman is the, well. It, it hinges on a twist, and the twist is bad. The two, and it, I didn't care about the twist, and I was surprised by it, and yet I didn't care about it. So I thought Coco, that they elided my favorite villain, which was the the woman with the mask. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I love every. That is the perfect movie up until the uh, Ares the aftermath itself. of her crossing no man's land. Yeah. After I mean, that, that, that's the thing. When she crosses no man's land, I'm like, this is the greatest film I've ever seen. And then, and then it doesn't kind of, stick the landing. It, kind of, it, yeah. it doesn't stick the landing. It's not terrible. It just doesn't stick the landing. For it. so, so, so that's why I think Ragnarok, which I is amazing Ragnarok is perfect. all the way through. I've watched Ragnarok probably 10 times now. Like it, Netflix has become the Thor Ragnarok channel in my house. And it is, so it is, good. It is and unquestionably hella, hella. A, a popular film and one that would not get recognized in a typical best picture it's probably the listing. lowest box office of all these movies isn't it uh no number eight but uh it made more way more than coco coco okay. is number 13 you've both seen coco yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you haven't seen coco see coco it will just make your month coco man i might actually coco if you look at the film that's going to stand the test of time like a lot of what a lot of why Thor Ragnarok is good is because a most of us had never seen a Taika Waititi movie at that point. Yeah, and b it takes a character that had been overly serious and makes him a comic comic foil, and then makes him a tragic hero, all in one like ninety minute roller coaster. Yeah, and and like Coco is a pretty near a perfect film. Yeah, like it's it's a it's an astounding piece I, of work. I was blown away by. I'm always blown away by the by the tightness. I mean, they're so famous about their story attention, but I'm always blown away by Pixar's the tightness, and it's almost like every one of their plots is a Swiss watch. The way Coco led leads you to leads one to believe in the beginning. The first five minutes, you're like, "Oh, I kind of see what how this movie's going to go," and then t- thirty minutes later, you're like, oh, "I have no idea what's going to happen." Yeah. 
All right, so let's and, go back one year. Right. All right, okay. so we think Thor Ragnarok. I, I would agree. I Thor think Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Probably yeah. on those. Yeah. 2017. In 2016, uh, what actually won Best Picture was Spotlight. Mm-hmm. Right. And oh, then, I thought it was. I thought it was uh, uh, the dancing movie. The dancing uh, movie. Uh, no. <laughs> Pitch. What? Pitch Perfect. You're, you're, what? No. Singing no. Movie? Uh, L.A. L.A. La La Land. La La Land. Oh. Wait. No. No. It was Spotlight. It, La La Land. Mistakenly. No, Moonlight in 2017. Oh wait! Not wait, spotlight. Wait. Moonlight. Moonlight. Yes. Moonlight. 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 Spotlight was nominated. Yes. yes. Norm, yes. you just you just weren't beating. I'm this, sorry. Uh, this whole <laughs> you should cut this part out. I, it, look, my recommendation would be to be blame Faye Dunaway. Look, Norman Chan will not be making these lists for us in the future. Uh, we <laughs> Price we've, we've, you, you, I, I got it right. Norm's Hold on. Behavior. It's two lights in a row. Moonlight won 2017 Best Picture. Oh. It, what you would call 2017. The, oh, they Moonlight used, was the best picture of 2016. I right, see. In the 2017 okay. Okay, awards. we got to get our terms this is right the year, here. This Good is the God, Moonlight man. year. This is just sloppy, sloppy fact checking here. This is okay. the Moonlight year. Okay, okay. the okay. year Moonlight won. Okay. Uh, of the, the top grossing films, uh, the five I'm going to call out, Rogue One. Okay. Finding okay. Dory. Yep. yep. Captain America Civil War. Yep. Wow, really? Uh, that was that recently? Okay. Deadpool. Yeah. And... The Jungle Book. What about Rogue Zootopia? Was uh, there? Zootopia was also there, but I'm I'm gonna instead I'm gonna say the Jungle Book. I'd say Rogue That's One it. followed by Zootopia, which I love Zootopia. I th- I would I would like it's a toss up for me between Rogue One and Zootopia. But, I mean I have bias. I as think this well. is tough, right? This Gary's is a friend. like what would you say was the best quote unquote popular I, film of that year? So I I, I tend to I, I'm in my own head eliminating the animated features because they get their own category. Okay, all right. So That's I fair. think you'd probably be removing those. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Civil War has too much going on, so it's easy to like. It's it's just a it's. I love Civil War, but it's not. It, it, it's it's my third favorite Cap film, second favorite Cap film. I think yeah. Winter, uh, Soldier. Winter Soldier is the yeah. best. Winter Soldier is is incredible. perfect movie. Another yeah. perfect movie. Yeah. like I've so watched is that it between one like ten Deadpool times. Deadpool and Deadpool. Rogue One. I thought like, Deadpool oh, was good, but it wasn't. Be- it, 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 I'm not the it wasn't most pop- I'm way, best I'm a cranky film. old man it, when I watch Deadpool. So I don't get this humor. These kids. Ah! So maybe this is the Star Wars movie year. All right. I I really I I still I really think Zootopia is the uh, is the best film that Disney Disney Animation Studios put out. I I, I met the directors of that film at uh, one of uh, Giacchino's recording sessions. Yeah, yeah. they mm. were very they were they were awesome. And I was uh, we talked a bit about how much you know about the story about how they changed the whole plot yeah, of that they, movie. It was originally about it was originally about Justin Bateman, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a terrific, Fox, yeah. an amazing shift. Yes, uh, well, and I love is, it when, yeah. again when you make up a movie or you change it radically halfway through and end up with something truly great, especially that's animated. Astounding, <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly, you can do it. Get about it. Yeah, holy cow. Okay, okay. Uh, the, the previous year. So wait, so we, we, did we agree? With I think it? Rogue One. Rogue One. I Rogue mean, one. Zootopia. Look, yeah, you never know what, which way the Academy is going to go. Did Zootopia win Best Animated Feature? I would hope. Or did Finding Dory beat it? I, I think don't think Finding Dory must have beat it. No, Finding Dory. Finding Dory. I love Finding Dory. I enjoyed it a lot. Did it, you guys like listening to us not know a fact that you know? It, it, look, this <laughs> is, it was Utopia. It yeah. was Utopia. Yeah. It yeah. beat it's, both Finding Dory and Moana. Wow. I think wow. it's a better film than Finding Dory. I de- definitely a better find, film than Finding Dory. I think it's a, probably a better film than Moana. I look, look as as the parent of a five year old. I've watched each of these movies at least a thousand <laughs> times. <laughs> okay. Um, what's, okay. What's yeah. 2015? This is the year Spotlight won. Okay. Okay. The year Spotlight won uh, five popular films, highest grossing films: Force Awakens, okay. Jurassic World, Age of Ultron, yeah, Furious Seven, ooh, and The Martian. Okay. Oh, The Martian. I'm gonna make a case for Furious Seven here. <laughs> I'm going to go to the bathroom. Wow, you guys no, no, completely no, he, bypass both Force Awakens and, and, and Jurassic World. Force Awakens is fine, but it's not It's not better. Jurassic World is not a See, great movie. this is the problem with our discussion right now. We are going and trying, out of the popular films I've named, you're trying to then critically assess them. We are. And, I can't not do that. And that's the, I think but, we just talk, this but, is the fundamental problem. Is this whole bit to make a point? Have but you done that, this, this whole bit to make a point? But this is the fundamental <laughs> problem with the Academy's <laughs> categories, the Academy's new category, mm-hmm. right? Is that if they're going to pick, if the if, if the category is for popular film, then they have to w- w- pick the one within so that criteria which is, that it which was is selected. The, um, which is the rating system that takes them, takes the fan ratings? Um, Both Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes have a fan yeah. rating section. Okay, right. Because um, that might be one of their metrics. They might they might aggregate fan ratings for films. That's a terrible. 
Terrible cinema idea. score. Look, <laughs> ask, then, ask that's the, the World Con people. Picture winner goes to Bodie McBoatface. Yeah, ask the World Con people how well it works for them. Ask with who? the Hugos, the World Con people. Oh yeah. God, yeah, no, um, I know it's a mess. So look, in I'm just gonna say in Furious Seven. There's a moment where The Rock is sitting in a hospital room with a busted arm after he's been shot a few times with his daughter. He hears that his friends, his, his family is in trouble. Oh, right. And he says, baby daddy's got to go to work and flexes a cast off of his arm. <laughs> and then he goes and beats some people to death. That may or may not be your jam, but that is a fine ass popular film. I have not seen it. You you are missing out. I sir. have not seen any of the Fast. They and are not films. good movies, but they are great movies. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we I'll really wanted to do the tank story. With, uh, with can the, you aim? On, can you change a tank's uh, orientation while it's falling by firing its gun? Oh, oh. the physics says yes, but mass maybe no. <laughs> oh. Wow, you need a tank. Yeah, you need a tank. And you need to drop it from high enough yeah. to fire. I mean, it's like, we, we well, it came across on Mythbusters production team, and we were like, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Should you choose this mission? Uh, yeah. Um, we need a really big fan. I mean, so uh, Force Awakens, what was the other one? Uh, Force Awakens, Jurassic World, Age of Ultron, Furious 7, The Martian. And The Martian the was Martian nominated clearly, for Best yeah. Picture. So, I was best comedy. I, I know. Going best comedy <laughs> musical or musical. <laughs> I mean, if there were some musical numbers, the Martian Spectre maybe it would have done a little better that year. Spectre was is probably Spectre was a fine film. I thought Spectre was terrific. Oh no, no no. Yeah, I thought Skyfall was terrific. Spectre was merely okay. Spectre's <laughs> Batista is one of the villains in Spectre, yes. right? And, and, with and, Christoph Waltz. And Christoph yes. Waltz. Yeah, I thought that Skyfall was better than Spectre. Yeah. None of them were as good as Casino Royale. No, that's the best one. That's yeah. the best Bond movie of all the Bond movies. I think that's one where if we looked at that year, that would easily be our best our, popular our film. But we, but we haven't had one yet where the popular film actually won the Oscar. No, no. Because that we happens. Haven't. Return of the King, Titanic, yeah. Return of the Jedi. Right. You know, right. right. Did Return happen. of the Jedi win Best Picture? I no. Think, I don't think no. so. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith. No, 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 no. All right. Uh, one more year Let's back. Let's go one more and year. We'll, and, that, and we'll end it right there. Yeah. The year is 2014, where the best picture winner was Birdman. Birdman. Definitely oh, not wow. a popular film. Wow, that already film. four years ago? Yeah. And now this is the year where I think it's going to be easy for us to pick. you got Hunger Games. Yeah. Uh, the, the last one, Mal- Mockingjay. you got Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. You have um, tra- Transformers, Which Age of on, Extinction. Is that the one with the dinosaurs or the swords? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, that's the one with dinosaurs. Look, look. There's the, the last Hobbit movie, and there's Winter Soldier. Let me make a case for Transform. No, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> okay, wait. What was the, read that list one okay. more time. Uh, Hunger Games. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy one. So I had to, we had to choose between Guardians, Guardians and, Winter and Winter Soldier. Soldier. There you that's, go. That's the tough. Those are the tough pair. That right Winter here. Soldier wins that hands down. Winter Soldier is a perfect film. Guardians is good, but it's not perfect. <sighs> Guardians is real plotty and 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 like they go a lot of places that just set up stuff for future movies. Like they set up stuff that happened in Infinity Guardians War. Guardians made so much more money, almost a hundred million more. It's not who Again, makes the most money. No, this yeah, is the Grammys. I, 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 I would agree with you on that. I would agree. With you. I'm 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 I'm. Guardians 2 is so fantastic. I am putting some of its quality oh, into no Guardians. Way. Guardians 1 is way better than Guardians 2. Oh, no, I love Guardians 2. I've actually watched I've watched that like four times already. So, okay. Here's the thing about Winter Soldier. Yeah. Every scene in Winter Soldier. I'm going to describe a scene you're going to say, "Oh man, that is my favorite scene in the movie." Oh, no, no. Remember I, when Cap when when he's in the elevator and he says, "Do we want to do yeah, this now?" Yeah. Yeah. And no, that's I'm, the I'm best right scene. There with you. Look, uh, I, this is a movie I've watched. It's one of my regular like <laughs> I just need to go to my happy place. Let me watch Winter Soldier. Right. When Natasha when they're riding the escalator and Cap's ready to fight, she's like, "No, watch this." And she's like, "Look, people just people look away from public display. That's a great scene. It's a million great character scenes and it makes Cap and Black Widow characters that we care about and love." Yep. When and kind of we didn't give I didn't give a shit yep, about either we get of them to watch at that point. Fury be a total badass. Oh, that car scene, the nurse and the down the hall it turns out yeah. to be a badass. It's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Colby Smolder, Colby Smolders. Col- yeah, Colby yeah. Smolders. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, I saw yeah. Colby Smolders backstage at the Emmys once. Really? Mm-hmm. She's twice as pretty in person as I'm, she seems. I was, I was on expecting you to say she's like three feet tall no, or like no, no, seven no. feet tall. I wasn't I, sure which one. She had a, a, a she had like a protective spell around her. You didn't feel like you could. Trapes within ten feet of her. She glows from the inside, and she was really gorgeous. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, My point. <laughs> Norm, this was an exercise for Norm's edification. Totally. <laughs> was for that it. 
<laughs> if we had problems coming up with our favorite, and the discussion is I fun. I feel like I'm a prop in your yeah, philosophy really. here, Norm. Like with Norm has the little Adam and Will dolls. <laughs> this this is the truly the Adam Savage what project. What do you think? Well, no, I think. Um, okay, go oh, ahead. Man, What's your problem? Yeah, we'll take that. The debate we had. The ginger's it, the, the debate we had is, is fun. I think that's what the Oscar, the Academy wants for the Oscars. They want that type of engagement where the people care about the films intensely and will debate them because the mo- most of the American public aren't going to care about debating between La La Land and Moonlight, right? Mm-hmm. They want to debate about Winter Soldier and Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, interesting. And that's what the, that's the so conversation. You think, that's fascinating. That you're, they're going to spur on. You're all thinking about it institutionally. Is they're like, how do we increase our cultural relevancy by with this through, by, via discussion well, by, by the, the, the engagement provocative of, discussion. Well, yeah. One of the critics I follow also pointed out that this airs on ABC, which is owned by the company that is most likely to benefit from this change. <laughs> which uh, which uh, has forty percent of the uh, uh, domestic gross on yeah, films. Exactly. Yes. Um, mouse. The the thing I will say is Which, that I I don't know what the Academy ballots look like, but I I I vote on several game award things, <clears> and the the balloting for that stuff like is so incredibly specific about the constraints of the categories and like depending on especially on the more on the technical stuff, but even on the broad stuff like best best VR game or whatever, you have such specific criteria that they're going to know whether the like what what's the judge of popular you know here's the mm-hmm. list of movies that can be considered popular for this year and it's not going to be I, I don't think it will be a hey you know i people really love the rock versus chris pratt was super funny in that dance scene at the beginning of guardians of the galaxy and mm. fundamentally i think the awards in general are too focused and the people who watch awards and care about awards are too focused on crowning a winner than celebrating the field and I know the Oscars wants to celebrate the field. I think as people who enjoy movies, enjoy like thinking about movies and watching movies, we want to celebrate achievements in filmmaking, not necessarily crown a winner. But, you know, as the great sage Ricky Bobby said, if you're not first, you're last, Norm. So... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's, that's a, I think that's a perfect I place. Think it's to totally end. a great place to finish this. <laughs> See you all next week. Uh, anything on the site this week, Norm? Yeah, we got the next episode of the What a Series Build, oh. and uh, we. I'm also- having such a fun time going down memory lane. Yes, yes. You did that like six years ago. Now I was still here when you shot those videos. It <laughs> seems like. Um, and uh, this is going out, but the previous week we also released Adam uh, painting uh, his contribution to the Magic Wheelchair Project for mm-hmm. Comic Con this uh, oh, cool. yes. this year, which is this. Uh, he did a you did an astromech yes uh, r2 oh, head. Awesome. r2 head really cool paint techniques and those sorry universe are... r2 head yes yeah yes. awesome yeah. okay we'll see you guys next week awesome. bye, bye guys thanks for watching thanks, thanks for coming